Filtering Iterables with Python. Welcome to this real Python video course. I'm Negar, and I'll be your guide as you embark on a journey to master the art of filtering iterables using Python. But what is filtering? You filter things in your life more than you think. Imagine you have a bag of freshly ground coffee beans, and you want to prepare a delicious cup of coffee. Before you start brewing, you notice that the coffee grounds contain some small particles or debris that you don't want in your final drink. To remove these unwanted elements, you decide to use a coffee filter. After the coffee filter catches the unwanted debris, you'll have your ground coffee beans ready. In other words, you kept what you needed, which were the coffee beans, and filtered out the rest, which were the unwanted elements. Throughout this course, you'll learn how to do this, but with Python iterables. You're going to use iterables and iterators a lot in the next lessons. To refresh your memory, try iterators and iterables in Python. This tutorial talks about things like generators, the yield keyword, and the next function. You'll also use Lambda functions a couple of times. Remind yourself what they are and how to use them by going through how to use Python Lambda functions, which is both a video course and a written tutorial. Now let's talk about what you're going to do in the next few lessons. You'll start by understanding the filtering concept, where you'll learn how to create filtering conditions. After that, you'll use Python's filter function to filter numbers and strings. For example, you'll filter odd numbers from a list of numbers and also find palindrome strings in a list of strings and filter out the non-palindrome ones. Then you're going to explore functional programming and pure functions. Then you'll move on to the map and reduce functions, and you'll explore how you can combine them with filter. After that, you'll discover the filter false function and its usage and how it promotes code reuse. And at the end, you're going to learn how you can replace filter with list comprehensions and generators. Are you ready? Next up is understand the concept of filtering. Welcome to this lesson where you'll dive into the fascinating world of filtering iterables. As a reminder, an iterable is any object that can be looped over, such as a list, a string, and a generator. Now let's clarify what filtering is. Filtering is a process of selecting specific elements from an iterable based on a given condition. Let's understand this better with an example. Here, you have a list of integers from negative 2 to 2 named numbers. Now, let's say you want to extract only the positive numbers from this list. To do this, you can define a function named extract positive that takes a list as its input. Inside this function, you create an empty list called positive numbers. Then, you loop through each number in the input list using a for loop. For each number, you check if it's greater than zero or not using an if statement. If it is, you append it to the positive numbers list. Now, this if statement is your filtering condition. Finally, once all the numbers have been checked, you return the positive numbers lists. When you run the extract positive function with the numbers list as its input, you get one and two as the result. So negative two, negative one, and zero have been filtered out since their filtering condition evaluated as false. One and two have not been filtered out since their filtering condition translates to true since, well, they are bigger than zero. In other words, the negative numbers and zero got filtered out. To summarize what you've learned so far, a filtering condition is a statement that evaluates to either true or false based on a given criterion. For example, the if statement from before, if number is bigger than zero, is a filtering condition. It evaluates to true or false depending on whether number is greater than zero or not. The members of the input get disqualified if their filtering condition is false. For example, negative two, negative one, and zero got disqualified in the example since their filtering condition evaluated as false. Congratulations, you now know the essence of filtering. In the next lesson, 
you'll explore how to use the filter function in Python to filter iterables. Good news! Python has a whole function dedicated to filtering. Let's discover it. Using the filter function is a convenient way to separate and extract data from an iterable based on a given condition. Using the filter function also eliminates the need for developers to write complex filtering logic. The filter function is a higher order function, which means it takes another function as one of its parameters. The filter function takes in two parameters, function and iterable. Function provides the criteria to filter out unwanted values from the input iterable. As you remember, this function argument is the reason filter is a higher order function. Iterable is any iterable, such as lists, tuples, sets, and iterable objects, such as generators. The filter function applies function to every item of the iterable in a loop. The result is an iterator that yields the return values from the function. This process doesn't modify the original input iterable. Before we get into using filter in action, let's pay attention to something. The first argument to filter is a function object, which means that you need to pass a function without calling it with a pair of parentheses. Let's extract positive numbers using filter. So the same problem from before, but instead of if statements and for loops, let's use filter. Your goal is to use filter to keep the positive numbers and filter out the rest. The input is going to be the same, so let's create a list of numbers from negative 2 to 2. Numbers equal square brackets, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. By the way, you will probably hear terms like the predicate function or the Boolean function. These are the same as your filtering condition. Def is positive. You're taking in number as an input. Now, this function is supposed to get a number as an input and then return true if that number is bigger than zero and false if it's not. So return number bigger than zero. For example, if you put a negative two here, return negative two bigger than zero. Well, is negative two bigger than zero? No. So the function is going to return false. And if you put in 2, for example, is 2 bigger than 0? Yes. So the function is going to return true. Now let's use the filter function with the is positive function as its function argument and numbers as its iterable argument. Filter is positive. By the way, pay attention how I'm not using the parentheses here, since filter needs a function object and not a function call. And numbers as its iterable argument. Here, you can see that you get a filter object, and you can't really see the results. But why? The reason is that filter returns an iterator object and not a list. So you can't just see its results in the console. To do that, let's convert it into a list. List filter is positive and numbers. Here you go. The result is one and two. Let's go through what happened here. You wrote the is positive function to take a number as an argument and return true if the number is greater than zero and otherwise return false. When you call filter, it applies is positive to every value in numbers filtering out the negative numbers. This is why negative 2, negative 1, and 0 have been successfully filtered out since their filtering condition, aka the isPositive function, has evaluated as false. And of course, 1 and 2 are bigger than 0, hence why they're the answer. You just successfully extracted positive numbers of a list using filter. Way to go! Now, you might be wondering, why would you use this filter function instead of good old for loops and conditional statements? Well, because the result is shorter. The filter function can be expressed in a single line of code, and the syntax is pretty intuitive. 
the result produced by filter is also faster. Why? Well, filter is written in C and is highly optimized. And also, its internal implicit loop can be more efficient than a regular for loop regarding execution time. This efficiency is arguably the most important advantage of using this function in Python. The result is also more memory efficient. The filter function returns an iterator, which means it only stores elements in memory as they're needed. You learn a lot of important things in this lesson. You discovered the filter function, learned how to use it, and also understood its advantages over regular for loops and conditional statements. Extract even numbers. Now that you understand how filter works, let's work on a new example. In this example, your goal is to extract even numbers from a list. First, let's see how you can do this without filter. You have a list of numbers here, 1, 3, 10, 45, 6, and 50. The extract even function takes a list of numbers as input and creates an empty list named even numbers. It then loops through each number in the input list and checks whether it's even or not. To do this, you're checking if each number's remainder is zero or not if you divide it by two. And you're using the Majulo symbol here, which is a percent symbol, that calculates the remainder of a division. For example, four Majulo two equals zero since the remainder of four divided by two is zero. If the number is even, or in other words, it's modulo two is equal to zero, the number is added to the even numbers list. Finally, the function returns the even numbers list containing only the even numbers from the input list. If you put in numbers in the extract even function, you get 10, six, and 50 as your result. So what happened? Well, odd numbers, one, three, and 45 got filtered out since their filtering condition evaluated as false. They're not divisible by two. For example, three modulo two is one, not zero. Yet even numbers 10, six, and 50 did not get filtered out since their modulo two is zero, making their filtering condition evaluate as true. Now let's do the same example, but use filter instead of for loops and if statements. Your goal is to extract the even numbers and filter out the odd ones. Your filtering condition is, if a number is divisible by two, you need to return true and otherwise false. Let's start by creating the input list, just like before. You have a list of numbers here, one, three, 10, 45, six, and 50. Next, let's create a function named extract even. It should take in a number and check whether it's even or not. If it's even, we should return true, if not false. Just a reminder that this function is also named as predicate or boolean. So let's do that. Def is even, number as an input, return. Here you're checking whether a number is divisible by two or not. So let's use modulo again. Return number modulo two equal equal zero. For example, if you put in three here, three modulo two is one since three divided by two has a remainder of one. So three modulo two is not equal to zero and is even returns false. Now let's use filter to apply is even to every number in the numbers list. Also just a reminder that filter returns an iterator. So let's call list on its result in order to see the results on the console. List filter is even as filters function argument and numbers as is iterable argument. Now here you expect to see the even numbers 10, six and 50, let's see if it worked. And it did work. Okay, let's see what happened here. The call to filter applied is even to every number in numbers and filtered out the odd numbers one, three and 45. As a result, you get a list of even numbers 10, six and 50. As you can see, this code is way shorter and more efficient than its equivalent for loop. 